tutorial will cover the Channel Network and Drainage Basin tool in Saga in QGIS and what the results mean. The first thing you should do is go to the Lake Vic Fish Dataverse at the link and search for DEM, which stands for Digital Elevation Model. Go to Filled DEM, Lake Victoria Region Raster, click on it, and here's the information about the file you'll be downloading, and then here are the files, and click download. It's a pretty large file, it might take a few minutes. Once it's downloaded, open your QGIS for desktop and navigate to your file. And load the LVDEM 30 meter hydro. So this is the digital elevation model and we're going to have to run the Saga tools on just a portion of it, uh, otherwise it, my computer doesn't have the bandwidth. So, we'll go to up to Raster, Extraction, and then Clipper, and your input file will be the LVDEM. The output file you can create to go wherever you need it to. I'll make it go here and call it LV Dem subset. Click save. And then we'll clip by the extent. So if, if the extent is checked, you'll get this little crosshairs and you can select the area that you want to use for the tools that will run. You can select an area, include a little bit of the lake and a little bit of the land, and get a little bit more land in there. And it'll change these coordinates to be the four corners of the square that you select. Load into the canvas when you're finished and click OK. That's a quick one. Click OK and then click Close. And there's your subset. You can see it on top of the DEM, and you can just turn off the DEM so that we have this subset. We can take a look at where this is in the world. If you go to Web, Open Layers Plugin, and Google Maps, and go to, we'll go to Google Streets just to see where it is. And then bring the subset above Google Streets. And We'll make this a little bit transparent so we can see it better. Go to trans go to right click on your subset, go to properties, and then go to transparency. And we'll just make it 50% so we can see through it. Click apply and click OK. And then right click and zoom to layer. And here's the area that I selected. Here's Bukoba, um, Lake Victoria, and the the Ugandan border there. We can turn off Google Streets. We don't need it. Before we get to the drainage basins and the channel network tool, we have to fill in the sinks in our satellite image. So what that basically means is we're going to eliminate the artifacts and the errors from the original satellite data. So there are sort of depressions that aren't actually there in, in like on the land in real life. So to do that, we'll search for fill sinks and you'll see a few Saga tools show up. So we're gonna run the fill sinks XXL, Wang and Lu. Make sure you choose your subset layer to be the input, not the full digital elevation model. If your computer is like mine, it won't be able to run it. Uh, and then we'll save this as a file. Um, 
the subset filled. And then click run. It might take a little bit and don't panic if it says it's not responding. Just give it a give it a few minutes to run. Okay, and there is our filled stem layer. So this is the temporary one. Just right click and remove that and add the one that you just made from your saved folder. And now we're ready to run the channel network and drainage basin tool. So if you just type channel into your processing toolbox, some Saga tools will come up and we want under terrain analysis, channel network and drainage basins. Double click it. The elevation is the filled subset that we just made. And then we can save each one of these as files. I'm just naming them to go with what the outputs of the tool will be. This is uh, drainage basins, and I'm saying drainage basins one because it, it gives you a second drainage basin later on. And then click run. When it's done, it spits out seven different layers and we'll go through each one and talk a little about them. So the first one, let's just turn them all off except for junctions right now. And we can turn on the Google map underneath so we can see where the lake is. There we go. So the junctions is showing essentially the intersections of streams. So if we zoom in, they're going to be all over the place because they're showing every single little intersection. If we turn on channels at the same time, you'll be able to see that. So it's showing the endpoints of each of the channels, which are draining water and the intersections of them. So let's zoom out again and take a look at those channels. We can turn off junctions. So you can see that there's a lot of the streams that are leading, that are, they're pretty thick in this area where there's river. And then um, these lines over here, it's a result of the subset that we took, I think. So let's turn on drainage basins and leave channels on and then right click drainage basins and go up to properties and then under simple fill click apply and click OK. So now we can see the outline of the drainage basins. So those are the the highest points essentially in the digital elevation model and all of the water is flowing down into these uh, the channels, the main channels. Uh, this tool gives you more than one drainage basin, but they look pretty similar.
I'm going to turn Google Streets off for now so that it doesn't take up all my computing power. If you turn on Strahler Order and look at the channels on top of it, Strahler Order is measuring the branching complexity of these streams. So if we uh, change the colors, right click and go to Properties, and then go to Style, and then go to single band pseudo color under render type. And then change interpolation to exact and then change mode to equal interval. And we'll make them the greens. Click apply and then click OK. And then let's turn our channels back on. And we'll zoom in. So the higher numbered Strahler order is showing the, the portions of channels that are closer to the major water waves. Okay. And then if we turn on flow connectivity, and we'll do something similar as we did with Strahler order. So we'll right click on flow connectivity, go up to properties, change render type to single band pseudo color, change interpolation to discrete, change the mode to equal interval. Let's make the classes four, so we'll have integers there. Click apply. Mm. Let's make those brown to green. Click apply, click OK. And zoom in a little bit. You can turn on your basins layer and see the outlines of the basins over the flow connectivity. Now if you turn on flow direction and we'll turn off the channels and then we'll change the colors of flow direction. So right click on flow direction, go to properties and then style single band pseudo color. Make the interpolation discrete mode equal interval. And it goes from 0 to 7, so let's give it 7 classes. And we'll change this red, red to blue. Click Apply. Click OK. And let's zoom in. So this is showing based on the landscape which direction the water will flow. And those are the layers that you get by running the channel network and drainage basin tool in Saga in QGIS.